Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. This time we are going to talk about units. Okay? We will define what a unit is. Actually, we said uh, we want to quantify a physical property, a feature of a thing. Yeah? To quantify a temperature, we want to quantify a length, we want to quantify a mass, we want to quantify things simply. Yeah? So that we have a number. However, the measurement does not only consists of the number. The measurement consists of a number and a so-called unit. Okay? That's a measurement. Okay? Write it down. Measurement. Equals a value, number. Multiplied with a unit, okay? So this unit is the, the base thing which I'm comparing the current measurement. I will say, okay, my measurement equals like two and a half times of this unit. Yeah? If something is two and a half meters long, I say it's two and a half times as long as one meter is, okay? That's, that's a measurement. I need a number and a unit. So, what is a unit now? Back in the times, people sat together and thought about, well, there are a lot of, there were a lot of units. Yeah? So, I don't know, the length of this arm, yeah? some important emperor said, this is our base unit now, for the length. Yeah? And from the neighbor country, and it was a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, you know, then they had a different unit, and this was incredible. It was the same name, yeah? What is a foot? Yeah? <laughs> this is also why it's called foot, because it's the length of a foot, actually, but of a standard foot, and so <sighs> it was simply not manageable, yeah? So, people came up with the SI system. Système international. Uh, it's, it's French. Yeah, I don't speak French. <laughs> Ooh, uh, to mention the obvious, yeah, I don't speak French. So, SI system. What is the SI system? People thought, uh, what are base units? Yeah? And they came up uh, with the idea that seven base units are sufficient to describe our world. Seven units. Yeah? These are called so-called base units. So we have our SI system consists of seven base units. Basis Manhattan, German. What are they? Well, one base unit is length. Length is measured in meters. Other base unit is mass. This is measured in kilograms. Other base unit is time. The unit for time is the second. Okay. Next base unit is the current. Base unit is an ampere. Okay. Then we have the temperature. This is measured in Kelvin. Yeah. Then we have the luminous intensity. Which is measure, measured in candela. Yeah. And then we have uh, the amount of, of substance. This is measured in mole. Yeah? And the thought, how could we define those base units in a way they are defined proper? Yeah? In the beginning, for, for instance, a length was, you know, there was a fancy staff, uh, there was a scratch and another scratch, and between the two scratches, it was one meter. This was sufficient. However, then, you know, we have to find more proper solutions, more proper definitions, because 
Now, if you want to measure the diameter of an atom, yeah, and you have a scratch on there, which is hundreds of, of atoms broad, you cannot measure that. So, now, yeah, all of those units, meanwhile, are defined in the matter with the help of constants, nature constants, natural constants, uh, so that they can be as exact as we need them. Yeah? One of the last things was the mass. Yeah? There was a ur kilo, yeah? base kilo, the kilogram in Paris, yeah? and we knew, they knew this piece of metal yeah? is getting lighter. Yeah? Then it's losing mass. They did not know why, yeah? but they knew it's losing mass. But they could not, it was always one kilo, yeah? and the kilo got smaller, yeah? so everything else got heavier. Yeah? It's not an excuse for me, but <laughs> it's really tiny numbers. However, it's there, yeah? and if you want to measure the mass of an electron, yeah, you really have to be precise. Okay? So meanwhile, all of these base units are based on, on natural constants, right? So everybody of us knows different units than this. Yeah? So for instance, there's the force, we usually say Newton. Yeah? There's the pressure, we, use, we usually say Pascal, yeah? and so on. And, and how, how is this somehow fitting to this? Huh? Well, usually there is a an, an physical law. Okay? There is a physical law how this physical quantity yeah, is derived from such base quantities, from such base units. Yeah? For instance, let's, let's stay at the force. Yeah? The force. Yeah? is mass multiplied by acceleration. This is the physical law behind the force. Mass multiplied by the acceleration is the used force for applying this acceleration to this mass. So let's have a look at the units. Mass is given in kilograms. And what is acceleration? Acceleration actually is the change of velocity over the change of time. Yeah. So I can already write, this is kilograms, change of velocity, Ch change of time is given in seconds. This I already have in base units. Yeah. Change of velocity, velocity is change of way, change of time, divided by change of time. Yeah. So we have here kilograms multiplied by a now way time time or if I write it down kilograms and then I have meters second squared because this second is going down yeah so actually it looks like kilogram meters by second squared yeah and this is a little bit you know, kilogram meters per second squared, we call it Newton. So, for units which are used very often, yeah, we have short names. For instance, Volt, uh, Coulomb, Tesla, Pascal, for the pressure and so on. There are certain, there are quite a lot of, of these of these things. Yeah? So a derived, these are derived units, this is so-called derived unit. And derived units are derived by using, by applying the physical law, the underlying physical law uh, to the units simply, uh, as tried to show here. Okay. So, 
And these seven base units are really enough to describe our world in different combinations with different uh, physical laws in the background. That's enough. Yeah? Sometimes we do have the need to describe a very big amount of those units. Yeah? Sometimes we describe it in very small amount. Let's take the meter. Yeah? We want to measure the diameter of a proton and we want to measure the universe. It's a totally different scale. Yeah? So I'm really, and I'm using the meter. Yeah? So this is why there are also uh, predefined factors. Okay? So there are names for predefined factors. For instance, everybody of you probably knows the centimeter or decimeter. Yeah? So there's one meter and the tenth part of this one meter is a decimeter. decimeter yeah? Then there's a centimeter, there's a hundredth part, a millimeter, there's a thousandth part and so on. So there are all those, those pre-names to it. Yeah? And the common pre-names for going down, yeah? for cooling off, going down. This is, now I write them in blue. Yeah? This is deci, decimeter, yeah? abbreviation is D, and this is 0 0.1, yeah? factor 0 0.1. Yeah? Then we have centi, yeah? abbreviation C, centimeter would be CM, yeah? and the factor is 0 0.01. Yeah? So this is 10 raised by the power of minus 1, this is 10 raised by the power of minus 2, and then we have 10 raised by the power of minus 3, and this is called milli. M. Yeah, so there is, a, uh, there is a millimeter, there is a millisecond, there is a milliampere, yeah, and so on. Yeah. This is only a thousandth part of the original unit. Yeah. And how is it going further? Then there is micro, micrometers, yeah? microfarad, for instance, 6, minus 6, yeah? and then there's nano, 9. Nano is nice because n and 9, this fits together somehow, yeah? nano, then there's pico, pico, P, this is an n, actually, to write it better a little bit, pico raised by the power of minus 12, yeah? then there's femto, raised by the power of minus 5, 15, then there's atto, yeah? atomic, yeah? very small, i, small a, yeah? and then there's also septo, yeah? This is raised by the power of 21, and there's yokto. <laughs> yokto, little y. 24. Okay, so these are for going down, for describing tiny things. Yeah? For describing bigger things, we have here, it's the deca. Decagram. Uh, deca. This is abbreviation DA, yeah, and this is 10, factor 10. Okay. Then there's the hecto. This factor 100, hectoliter, for instance. Yeah. Then there's kilo. This is one fa factor 1000, 10 raised by the power of 3. Yeah. This is interesting. There's a base unit which is already measured in kilograms, so not gram is the base unit. The base unit is kilogram. That's interesting. Yeah, so that's the only the only base unit where this is the case that we already use such such pre term. Huh? Well, kilo. Then we have mega. M. It's a million. Yeah. Then, of course, we have Giga. These are common names for those who work with memories. Uh, 
megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte is the next one. Tera. Peta. Let's see when we have the first peta drive bytes. Uh, peta byte drives. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, 15. Then we have exa. E. 18. And then we have zeta. And now, here we have the case okay, that this is a small set. This is a big set. Yeah, so this is small and big set. Uh, this is 21, so there's a huge difference. And there is Jota. Jota. And also here we have a small and a big Y. Yeah, this is 10 raised by the power of 24. Okay. So this is the SI system. Yeah. Important is that if you set, if you're using a, a physical law like this and you put in those values as base units, in base units, in SI units, yeah, then the result will also be in a base unit or as a, a standard unit. Okay? Without those things here. Yeah? Uh, well, sometimes it's not very convenient. Yeah? And sometimes I, I give you I give you one example. Yeah? So let's use uh, an example everybody knows. Yeah? We want to calculate the power of a rotating shaft. All right. So the power of the rotating shaft P yeah, is the moment of force multiplied by the angular velocity. Yeah? This is the physical law behind this stuff. Yeah? So this is the angular velocity. This is the moment of force. Torque. And the result is the power. If we enter this here in rad per second and this here in newton meter, we will earn the power in watts. Yeah? If we are using directly the, the underlying physical law yeah, and we're using the correct quantities, the correct unit, then this is called a quantity. equation. This is how you calculate the power of a rotating shaft. However, sometimes those things are not usual. Yeah? So, for instance, if we want to have uh, omega, which is in rad per second, if we want to have this replaced yeah, by n, yeah, so the rotations per minute, revs per minute, which is far more usual. Yeah? And we want, do not want to have the power in watts. Yeah? We want to have the power directly in kilowatts, because it usually fits better for a rotating shaft. Yeah? So let's see what we have to do. Yeah? One minute per second is one sixtieth yeah, rotation per second. Yeah? And these are 2 pi divided by 60 rad per second. Yeah? So actually this is P divided by 30 rad per second. And one kilowatt actually are one thousand watts. Okay. So let's see. 
if we have here now the power p in kilowatt. How do we get to the power p in watt? What we need? Yeah? We have to multiply this with 1000. Now we are in watt. Yeah? This is exactly this, this factor. Yeah? And this equals m in newton meter. We don't have to adapt here because here we have m in newton meter multiplied by n in rotations per minute multiplied by this factor here because this factor need to have one rotation per minute to rad yeah? pi divided by 30 okay so if I bring this now here to the other side yeah, I have the following formula p in kilowatt equals m in newton meter multiplied by n in rotations per minute multiplied by a factor and this is p divided by 30,000. 30 divided by 1,000, 30,000. This is an adaption factor to fit those, those units, all right? To fit those units to this unit I want to have. Yeah? To adapt this equation, which is actually called numeric, uh, write it blue, numeric value equation yeah. this I can do yeah, to adapt a physical law to my needs however if I just write this down yeah, so P is M multiplied by n and then some factor. I really have to give the units we have to put in. Okay? Because then otherwise this factor would not be correct. That's it. Okay? So you always have to declare if you have a quantity equation or numeric equation. A quantity equation as i units are there and can be used and and a numeric equation, numeric value equation uh, you have to know in which units you have to put it into your equation that you get out what you expect. All right, so this is the SI system, okay? The units. The measurement is a number multiplied by a unit. Next time we will going to talk about what type of measurements do we have? Huh? Huh? How can we? Distinguish. Yeah, it's a little bit, you know, categorizing things. It's not really what I prefer. However, it is a thing. Yeah, and this is why I tell it. Next video then. Categorize. Categories of, of systems, uh, of measurement systems. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.